The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Addressing the people and his disciples, Jesus said, The scribes and the Pharisees occupy the chair of Moses. You must therefore do what they tell you and listen to what they say. But do not be guided by what they do, since they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy burdens and lay them on men's shoulders, but will they lift a finger to move them? Not they. Everything they do is done to attract attention, like wearing broader phylacteries and longer tassels, like wanting to take the place of honor at banquets and the front seats in the synagogues, being greeted obsequiously in the market squares, and having people calling them rabbi. You, however, must not allow yourselves to be called rabbi, since you have only one master, and you are all brothers. You must call no one on earth your father, since you have only one father, and he is in heaven. Nor must you allow yourselves to be called teachers, for you have only one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Anyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and anyone who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You must therefore do what they tell you and listen to what they say, but do not be guided by what they do, since they do not practice what they preach. Dear friends, how is Lent going for you? We are now on um, the Tuesday of the second week of Lent. We're not halfway there yet. We're pretty much in the starting days. How is Lent going for you? For some of us, we might be sailing along quite well, you know, going okay with our prayers, going okay with our uh, our chosen uh, sacrifice, the things that we gave up, or the things that we've picked up for this Lent. But maybe some of us are also struggling. Maybe we are feeling in ourselves, you know, the pinch you know, of having let go of some things. And we might find that some of us are probably feeling a bit cranky, uh, you know, because we feel the absence of these things that we have given up, you know, technology or certain kinds of food or certain things that we enjoy. It is very important, I think, in the midst of our fasting, in the midst of our self-denial and sacrifice, um, that we get to have a closer look on the way we practice and live out um, the Christian life. You know, some of the saints tell us about having something like the unity of life, you know, of be being able to look after the, the entirety of our spiritual life. For example, that we should be able to hold in tension together, in balance, um, our Lenten self-denial, and to be able to not pour out that frustration on another person, you know, in a way that doesn't really work, you know, to um, perform this act of sacrifice, but then to snap at another, you know, and to say to ourselves, well, oh, it's because I've given up this thing, you know. Our Lord cautions us against, you know, this difference of practice or of preaching one thing but doing another. We have one teacher, as it just said in the Gospel a while ago, it is Christ the Lord, He who is in heaven. And so you and I, throughout the day, let us look for little pockets of silence, little pockets of prayer during our day, an opportunity for us to check back in with the teacher, with Christ the Lord, to be able to say to Him, Thank you for your grace that allows me to go and do this thing, you know, this act of self-denial. But I need your grace also to look after the other areas of my life that need looking after. I need your grace to help me from, you know, to preserve me from snapping at other people because I am so hot-headed. And help me, Lord, to derive great strength, you know, from spending more time with you in prayer, in giving up something for this season, of giving away to other people. When we look at Christ, his whole life is a unity. 
your everything done for love of the Father's will. And so let us ask the Lord to give us that same grace, to give us that same love for the Father's will, so that everything we do, everything we say, everything we think, will form into that unity of gospel values, which we hope to receive in its fullness from Him.